Um, he's not doing a great job, this guy, Andrew Bailey, is he? He reminds me of, of the of the, uh, of the character in Airplane, <laughs> uh, who, who as, as the stricken plane is coming into land, someone says to him, shouldn't we turn on the runway light? And he says, no, that's just what we'll be ex they'll be expecting us to do. <laughs> uh, it, it does seem a bit counterintuitive. That being said, a lot of these problems could be uh, uh, averted if the government were to introduce a 2 or 3% tax uh, uh, drop in taxes mm. for that middle income band, the, the ones who are currently paying 40%. Yeah. Uh, that would help mortgage owners enormously, would also get the economy going. Mm. Uh, but but uh, I know Rishi Sunak has said <clears throat> that he would like to see a, a decrease in, in, in taxation, but he said it in much the same way that, you know, I would quite like eggs benedict yes. for lunch. I'm not going to get it. Right. Know. Yeah, yeah. Well, he talks a good game, doesn't he, Rishi Sunak? I mean, he's the master of uh, this is what I'm going to do, uh, and then doesn't do it. You know, I'm going to stop the boats. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of my five yeah, key, no, no, one of my five key uh, planks of, of of policy. Have you stopped the boats? Uh, no, I haven't. No, no, indeed. And of course, he's also got Jeremy Hunt at the Treasury to contend with, uh, which you know one really wouldn't want to do. No. Uh, so he's he's in a cleft stick. He's tied by the fact that Labour is 20 points ahead or 17 points ahead and there's nothing much he, it seems that he could do about it. No. Though if he introduced tax cuts for that middle income bracket, he would be able to do something about it. That would be a hugely popular move. Yeah. <clears throat> if he wanted to go even further, reduce them to 35%. You know, I, I mean, if you, if you want to make a stand, um, uh, you can keep the top rate what it is. Mm. Uh, but but makes, the, the problem we have in this country is low wages. That's why wages are rising so fast at the moment, because they've been low for so long. Yes. If you gave people a bit more of their wages back in taxes, people would be a hell of a lot better off and more inclined to vote uh, Conservative at the next election. Yes. I don't know if Starmer would react to that. You know. Yeah, I mean, well, as, as everybody always knows, it is absolutely the economy stupid, even though, unfortunately, it was Bill Clinton that said it. You know, people are much more likely to vote for you uh, if they feel that you've made them wealthier or, or at least That's you've right. made them less poor, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. And, and at the moment, all Rishi is able to do is tinker at the edges, make vague promises and not actually do anything. Mm. Uh, I mean, God, we're, we're, I, I think what Liz Truss and... Um, what Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng did was wrong. I don't think the top rate of taxation needs cutting particularly, you know. Um, but but it, it seems to have made it impossible now for a Conservative Party to cut taxes. Yes. Because people will say you're just being Liz Truss again. Right. Uh, Although it does seem pretty galling for a lot of people to find that when they do start to make really, really good money, um, they have to give half of it back to the government. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, indeed. It, it, it's uh, it's infuriating, and it, it, you could, if you if you had the maths to hand, you could do a really good calculation, which said a three or four percent cut in in the forty percent rate of tax would mean you would have this much more money yeah. uh, spend per year, which would cover not merely your mortgage increase increase rate, but would also cover your uh, fuel bills, yes. uh, and then leave you with. Two thousand quid to go and get laid in Ayanapa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you could probably get it for less than that, to be honest, in, in Ayanapa. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, know, no, you might have change out of a couple of hundred quid. But I mean, a hundred quid. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the thing about the, the interest rate rise is that if it was on its own, yes, you would perhaps be forgiven for saying to people, just you know, pull your socks up and get on with it. But everything else has gone up so much. Um, that people are looking genuinely. I mean, I'm talking to people saying, "Oh, I think my mortgage is going up by 500 quid a month." Meanwhile, my, you know, my heating bill's gone up by about 400 quid a month, and my food bill's gone up about 200 quid a month. You know, it starts to get to the point where even reasonably well-off middle-class people are getting squeezed. Yes, they are. But by the same token, <clears throat> I don't think the government should do anything at all about the the mortgage interest rates, uh, other than perhaps enjoin the building societies, if there are any left, uh, or the banks, to uh, 
perhaps be a bit more open to the notion of extending loans over a longer period and so on, particularly for people who are younger and trying to get on the mortgage uh, on the housing ladder. Um, you know, it, it is nonetheless the case that I can remember paying mortgages at this rate before. Yeah. Uh, mortgage interest rates go up, you know. They do. They do uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's the nature of the system. Um, but then I'm saying that from the point of view of someone who had a fixed rate, who has a fixed rate mortgage for the next three or four yes. years. But I mean, uh, I've, I've, I'm like you probably, you've been through the mill in various different categories of house and flat and, you know, giving some away for one reason or another and losing money for one reason or another. I remember uh, when I got divorced, the house that I, that I had then in Wiltshire actually made quite a lot of money, but I had an endowment mortgage. Remember those? Um, yeah, no, because, I do. Because yeah. it was the only kind of mortgage you could get. Um, when, yeah. I paid, when, I, when I paid the bank off the mortgage that I, that I owed them, um, they said, would you like to keep the endowment part of the mortgage going as a sort of life insurance policy? And I said, well, maybe. I said, how much will it be worth in 11 years' time when it comes to term? And they said to me, probably less than you're going to put into it. And I went, right, well, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll keep it then. That doesn't sound like a great investment. Either. I'm not very good at maths, but that doesn't sound like a very good investment. Well, I think, I also think, I mean, the mortgage lenders have been playing fast and loose for a long time. I should just briefly give you my experience of, a, of uh, uh, virtually a year ago this month. Um, I, I had a 30-year um, a mortgage with uh, one particular company, mm. uh, and uh, they rang up and said, uh, you can't have your mortgage anymore. Oh, great. <laughs> so well, what are you talking about? And they said, well... Um, it, it came to renew the rate, uh, and they said, uh, no, you can't renew the rate, you can't have your mortgage. Uh, I said, well, why not? They said, because you'll be too old. I said, but you knew that when I took the mortgage out. Yes. You know, the, and they said, yeah, yeah, but we've changed our minds now. And then they charged me 800 quid to leave their company. Mm. <laughs> I just, it's just downright robbery. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, it's George Orwell. But I got it right. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, go on, sorry. Right, you just said they're a, <coughs> effectively an institutionalised con, a robbery. Yes. Uh, a con job. Well, it is. It's <laughs> usury, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the, it's the, worst, usury, it's the yeah. worst kind of, of, uh, uh, of business because they know uh, that you need to borrow the money to buy a house because you can't buy it out, yeah. right? But they can also do whatever the hell they like with you once you've taken the money. That's right, yeah. I mean, Orwell said it was even worse than insurance. Yeah. As a scam. yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would tend to agree with that. Yeah, I mean, if they came and said, we now need your firstborn child in addition to your uh, monthly yeah. payment, they'd probably find some rule that meant they could, they could actually enforce that. But absolutely extraordinary. Stay where you are, Rod, because we've got to take a little break. We're going to come back uh, to talk about the case of judgment, uh, not just because of the case of Carla Foster, but just in general. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about teachers as well. This is Talk TV.